Well, I'm going to show you real quick all the different boxes. I did take the plastic off the box, but I've not looked in the box yet because I want to wait for y'all. So, first off, the big box. Base game. Super thick. Which I'll be unboxing first. But, let me show you real quick. I got all the expansions to show off, too. So, one, two, three. Kind of skinny, but still same same dimension as this, but just skinnier. And then a really small box and some cards, which we'll be going over. So let's check out what's in the big box. So this is Merchant's Cove uh, by Carl Van Ostrand with Johnny Peck and Drake. Villarreal, art by the Miko, the Miko, however you say it, or it's supposed to be said, I probably always mess it up, and I believe I've talked about be him before, and accidentally said the Milo, not the Miko, it is the Miko, M-I-C-O, now, uh, Merchant's Cove, the Pearl of the Five Realms, the Five Realms is their general fantasy, um, realm, I guess you can say, that they a lot of their games fall into uh, Final Frontier games. Uh, now, not a huge deal because I don't worry too much. I know some people might care. I got a box that was a little dinged on the corner. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, none of the components have issues. I think this primarily stems from the fact. See how the box top does not fully sit onto the whole box. Probably because of the punch boards and whatnot, but that does leave that corner a little bit more fragile during shipping. Now, as long as the components are okay, I don't worry about it too much. I can still play the game. It happens. Some people out there freak out that the box isn't perfect, but we're not going to worry about it. So let's see what we got. Now this is for ages, it says ages 14 and up, 60 to 90 minutes, base game, one to four players. Put this, I uh, know that's going to shadow too much, so I'm going to put this off onto the floor. I'll get back to box top later. Which it looks like they did try to do a little bit to help support the box during shipping with these corner inserts. I guess they weren't the perfect size or just, it is what it is. But that's just straight up out of the way. That is trash today. So we got a big package. It looks like it's a uh, resealable, almost bag-like plastic probably won't keep it in it uh, we got 3d punch board assembly instructions for the boats uh, we got some different shelves blacksmith captain uh, chronomancer alchemist decanter so there's a, quite a few different things once we punch that you can assemble on this I probably won't do all of that tonight just because of how much I want to look through but let's see what else we got so I'm gonna shift this over out of the way you know what? have fun looking at that I'm going to see what's in this now for, first thing I see this little punch board on top one of the pieces has fallen out so this has either been cut very well with very small tabs and loose or we got some thin cardboard or a combination of both so we'll see what happens so I want to look at that piece that fell out yeah the, the tab on that that they use when laser cutting or however they use might be a punch cut that is a super thin tab. Like, you can see it. 
almost can't feel it. There's a couple of them on it. Inside, but yeah, they're, they're super thin so that you're not going to risk tearing anything punching these at least. Yeah, so like, look how little pressure it took to have that first one, that other one come out. Yeah, so that is a little bit thin. Uh, maybe, it looks like, maybe two millimeter thick cardboard. Not the thickest, definitely not the thinnest I've seen. Um, but yeah, thin cardboard is not necessarily bad cardboard. Uh, looks like there's kind of a matte finish, so it doesn't glare too bad, which is nice, especially for streaming. Looks like there's four of these. Um, I believe these can be gained by any player during the game as bonus slots. We can move this in front of my computer, show off some of the artwork on those little tiles. I realize they're upside down. Always trying to remember which way that camera is, because I have to change it occasionally. Yeah, so we got four of these different action type spaces, it looks like. So we've got some, looks like little mini booklet rule books for each type of character, because, like I said, each character plays differently. Like, not just, oh, they have different artwork. It is, you're playing a different mechanic. So what do we got here? We got some single side printed, uh, potentially player boards. Oh, no, these look like insert pictures because the way it shows look once assembled the boat's sitting on their side so this these may sit in the box showing you how to organize your game that's always very helpful especially in larger games like this that there's so many pieces knowing how to put it into your box is so appreciated so like we have yeah, these mini booklets, we have uh, the alchemist. Uh, so you gather mysterious ingredients from your decanter, mix them in your cauldrons, and brew them in Merchant's Cove's finest potions and elixirs. Your shop has a good supply of magical ichor, a slightly toxic full ingredient. It's great when used in moderation, but too much can serve trouble. Will you let it corrupt your practice? So this one's going to play somewhat like Potion Explosion there's going to be a, a bit of a trickle down effect on the pieces you take and how they cascade together and so this actually goes over the components that this player will need i guess there's a little bit of glare on that but yeah uh talks about the setup for this specific character or player what this player would need uh, their actions and how long things take some an example of stuff has a really good layout numbered as well which i appreciate some more examples um okay let's see what the next one's going to be so then we have the captain um as the swarthy captain grew until you sell your fleet on the high seas in search of valuable treasures to bring back and sell at the piers you won't know what kinds of treasures are buried on the outlying islands until you go searching but surely many riches await you during these journeys, you may also discover mysterious temptations and dark curses hidden in the waves. Yet, it's not all so glamorous and swashbuckling. Sometimes you'll need to make ends meet by simply fishing or patrolling the waters. And again, we have the components needed, all the setup, the actions that this player can take at their player board. That's two different characters so far. Next we have the Peddler. So it talks about a solo mode on this one. So I'll have to look into the rules and see if all of them can be played solo or only the specific character. That'll be interesting to find out. 
and the peddler AI is capable of being used in a two-player game to simulate a third player as well. That is interesting as well, because sometimes you don't want to always play a two-player game because you feel it's unevenly matched. And so that can bring some balance back into the game. Uh, it talks about the setup, components... Oh, it may be that this isn't actually a character for a player. This is pu this is purely the AI. So the peddler is a solo AI that will compete against you in a two-player game. This rulebook outlines how to operate the peddler just like a normal game. Your goal is to have more gold than the peddler after three rounds. So yeah, that is purely the AI, which a lot of writing to read through um, not a huge amount of pictures on it but it looks seems straightforward with the setup um, not too many rules but comparatively I've seen easier AIs to learn so we'll see how that works out in the actual game now an actual player character option is the chronomancer and his assistant so as Wiz Gray, the cr chronomancer, you and your assistant, Humpty Macau, are entrepreneurial time travelers. You made a business out of revisiting history to bring back valuable relics and artifacts. But the machines are rickety, oftentimes throughout the day, or was it yesterday? Hmm. You and Humpty just end up running around your workshop trying to configure unstable time portals. If you let them get the better of you, it may jeopardize your many possible futures. So let's see what, so of course it talks about components set up your player board, uh, the different actions you can actually take. Uh, so it looks like movement, you have two that you're moving around in restricted ways. What is the captain's general type of mechanic? Remember. Uh, I think the captain may be a rondelle style moving around a circle. But of course, I'll learn. I'll look into most of these, learn them, and try to uh, learn all of them eventually. But of course, this artwork is fantastic. Next up, we have the blacksmith. A blacksmith's job is straightforward. As Olaf Thundercrack, you work with fire and metal. You have four hot furnaces and you forge weapons and armor to equip adventurers for battle. Honest, efficient, and hardworking. You can easily avoid corruption as long as you can handle the heat. So there's some good, decent flavor text on top of the game itself. So it looks like of course, components set up in general, but this is, has a dice rolling mechanic to it. So if you like a little bit of luck factor, this character might be for you. So let's see what we got here. It looks like we got some of the main player boards and such. That may be the main board. Let's see what this board is. So this looks like the Chronomancer main board. Uh, these are two layer, uh, not super thick, but not ne not necessary to be super thick. Next, we have the blacksmith's board, and you can see the two layers allow for recesses for the dice or other components. We have the captains. So spots for money or other options. You have different insets from the dual, dual layer board. Okay. Then we have the alchemist. Just make sure I turn it correctly. So this, of course, again, two layered, two layers little indentations for the marble-like 
pieces, which we'll see if they're actually marbles or what they are once I get into the box. Uh, spots for, of course, different things. And then this looks like the Peddler, which is the AI board. So all of those are pretty significant in size. Those are what? At least 10 inches? Close to... Yeah. So almost 12 by 12 alone. So this, this game may be a table hog, if you're not careful. Well, now let's see this main board. So I got five boards already, all dual layered. We haven't even looked at the main board. So this is a six fold. And it's taking up my full camera. Yeah, so this is almost two foot well, just under two foot by three foot, give or take, with each second section being at least ten inches by ten inches or more. But I do like how they've custom shaped every board. Now this this board itself is a single layer; it is not a dual layer board. Um, but there'll be ships out here that you can, that end up moving, spaces for cards, a time track, scoring track around the outside of the board which looks relatively easy to read, but they've really integrated the art style into it, which I really enjoy how they've done that. It's not just blocky. It kind of looks like the scale of the dragon going around. Now, there are not a lot of hard spaces between each number. They're very light. Let's see. I'll try to get this into the extra camera. So if you look right here, each number, well, the green ones are a little bit easier to see between, but they've just slightly taken the color and made it lighter. They're not like hard lines, which good art style, just some people will have a hard time seeing across the board when they're counting up in numbers. But they do have each number individually as opposed to only the fives or tens. So pros and cons, either way, depends on what you like. So yeah, that is a six-fold board oh, on the back of it. It does have a little bit of artwork. It looks kind of like a map. So it looks kind of like the map of their general... Kind of how they integrate a lot of their games together with the same general theme. We have Merchant's Cove. We have Cavern Tavern, which is another one of their games. Caveborn, and then it kind of talks about like the different realms of the different types of um, races, like the halfling, the trobits, the humans, elves, and such, and the dwarven range. So it's, and then it kind of makes it look like it's the sea out here, where Merchant's Cove, this game, is where people are come, where people are generalized, are coming into port selling goods, which is what this game is about. So that was that board. Now let's see what else is in this box. So we talked about assembly instructions already. And next we have general rule book. Let's see what I can show off on this. So of course, beautiful, stunning artwork. Straight up, kind of a little intro, core components. So not components that the, each player needs, but the components that you need for the main board. Uh, the main board setup. The game structure, how the main board and its integration works with everyone together turns work between players uh, how boats get loaded because some of the meeples get drawn from the bag into the boat so there's still a random factor in in the game talks about market phase the rounds 
uh, to clean up final score and some example stuff on it. Some different common actions. We got some credits. An easy appendix. And all of this is very easy to read. Artwork integrated throughout with examples. It's one of the reasons Final Frontier Games is one of my favorite. Just how well thought out every part of their game is. From rules, rule book, artwork, components, gameplay. I have not had a bad experience with a Final Frontier game yet. Uh, we have a game overview. So just kind of a quick synopsis of most of the stuff that was already in the book. Which is helpful. Okay. And we're back to the main box. And components, components, components. So we got some wooden discs. I'll have to see if these are character specific or board specific or main board specific. So these I'll have to kind of show off and then put back in the wrong bag. So we do got different colors, so I assume like these go together and then depending on the character you're playing you get a set of these on the main board kind of like the alchemist that looks like the AI color or the maybe the blacksmith and then we'll figure out what those are as we play but these are screen printed wooden components uh, screen printed on both sides which is very nice and it looks like each of these colors is very easy to distinguish between which is always appreciated even though I am not colorblind or have co uh, much issues I do know some people that have more issues like that so it is appreciated when games take that into consideration okay we got a bag of jewels Okay, so we got some, oh, really, these are plastic, um, if you want to call it resin, I don't know. Um, I've seen this shape used in other games before. It's pretty standard, standardized gem shape now, nowadays. But it, it's hard not to use these when the light hits these so well. And then the black is a different shape. It does look really nice in the light. I'll give it that. It does kind of stand in contrast to the wooden components, I will say. Okay, next up we got, it looks like standees. Or, they're going to be standees, and so these are standard, clear bases for standees. Whole bag of them. I'm not going to dump them out, I'm just to put them back in the bag right now. Whole bag. And then we have some pretty nice soft bags, drawstring bags. Not huge. Only what, by six by four, give or take. Um, camera's not showing it great. That's, that is a more forest, I'm not gonna say bright, but a, a standard think green it does not look quite that dull it does appear my camera color is slightly off Let's see what that looks like yeah it's it's gonna be more of a true green if like straight up green if you think about green and that one of course is brown so now this is really nice the insert now, like we talked about this talks this shows us how this insert is used so this right here will show you what goes inside that insert and likely the same with both of those now that one is turned but it's likely that one right there I'm gonna take those out set them to the side let's get to the real good stuff Oh, I see some punch boards. Okay, let's see what we need to pull out here. 
Okay, so we got more inserts. We got some dice. Pretty basic black, yellow, blue, green, and red. Uh, nothing special about these dice, but quality, just nothing to call home about and say, oh, yeah, these are amazing. They're just dice you would expect to find in the game. Okay, so here's some of the marbles. These are a little bit smaller than, say, Potion Explosion. You can see they're not huge there. But they do look cool. Not super heavy, heavy enough though. Okay, we got a little spinner already assembled. You don't have to punch the middle thing together. Which, honestly, I don't remember the last game I played that had a true spinner. There's not a lot of them that I know of on the market currently. At least that are currently being new as new releases. Now, I'll have to figure out what this is about. I think I read something on the Kickstarter. They did a backer update about what these cardboard pieces go to to help support some of the inserts or something. So I will not be throwing away this cardboard. But basically laser cut punched cardboard. Probably just spacers or, or something for the inserts. So I will be holding onto those quite nicely. Okay, we got some interesting little miniatures. See how well we can see those. Oh, put them upside down. So we got little plastic wood boats. And that looks like we got each of the primary character, player characters. And then this one looks like the, that's, I think that's the assistant. To the, yeah. But we're doing this a little bit faster than we usually do, so we're not gonna pop them all out. Okay, and we got some wooden screen printed meeple characters. I'm gonna pull a few out of these, a few of these out. Double sided. We got some blues, we got some yellows, uh, gray ones, red ones, and green ones. All the same shape. Whole bag of them. Okay, and we got a small Ziploc of cards. I guess these can be used to help randomize what character you're going to be playing. If you can't decide, you gotta deal one out randomly to each player and then it picks their character for them potentially. Now, Alchemist one does look like the bag. So I believe the marbles for that character go into the bag during the game. So that's what these other cards are. These all have this back. Not sure what they do yet, but interesting to see. Okay, this card right here, it says it's the Dragon Island Festival. It's a module that allows you to play, place known adventurers onto boats instead of blindly drawn. And more mod modulars like this can be found in the Secret Stas expansion, which I do have and will be opening soon. So, that'll be interesting to see what all that is about. So, if you don't like too much random luck based stuff, there's that option right there. Okay. 
that was those cards. I see a small deck of cards. Well, a deck of small cards. I'm not going to say it's a small deck because that is a lot of cards. Hopefully you don't shuffle them all together. Uh, is there a quick release? Unfortunately, there is no quick release, which is regrettable. Because these small decks are always the hardest to open. And then you have to take a knife to the edge and you always inevitably mess up one card. So, here's to nothing. Got my knife. Now there's a small hole in it. I'm trying to catch. I hope it let me catch it. Okay. It looks like I can do this without damaging anything. Okay. That is fortunately a thin plastic that was a thick plastic that would have been really frustrating okay and we got looks like several different types of decks so we got that deck back yeah so if you've played cavern tavern you'll probably recognize this artwork so the character characterization style is extremely similar if not exactly the same. So we got some lanterns on the backs of these. Potentially objectives or some or something of that. Okay. These now I've recently read or saw something that these are corru corrupted cards that can basically deal you negative points at the end of the game. There might be ways to get rid of them depending on which card you draw. Some are straight up. Some might be color based. And these are, uh, not exactly sure what these are, but of course a lot of interesting artwork. I really enjoy this art style. Kind of high fantasy, but still kind of quirky and semi-relatable. So, um, yeah, next up is this punch board. Let's see if I can figure out how these pieces go in the box real quick. So I can start push, putting them away. At least some of it. Okay, so some of those cards may have been solo cards. That's why I wasn't sure. Okay, so the box allows you space for corrupt. I want to say that that's the solo set, and then these are the townsfolk. Okay, that was based off looking at that right there. Uh, apparently, this space right here is for all of these. Hopefully, it fits without having to take them out of the bag so they don't fall around too easily. And the bottom so there's gonna be cards that go there yeah, quite a few other things that can end up going there but for now fit some of this stuff back in that was there something back in the bottom of that didn't it is what it is I think that was something in there maybe maybe not oh, wait. these were here let's try to get this stuff out of the way so I can do these punch boards Oh, hello, da Boomer. I'm crossing your fingers that you don't do the same thing as I do unbox, admire, sort, admire, again, put away in every place. Yeah, so currently I'm just unboxing um, just so I can see everything because I actually bought everything. Um, on the floor next to me is all the expansions as well, so I'm just trying to look at everything. 
and then I'm going to decide which character to try first. Um, but with limited table space, I'm kind of having to repack a little bit as I unbox. And then once I punch everything, I can actually sort it. Nice thing is it did show how to sort it into the, the box insert. I'm not sure if you've opened it yet. But how are you today? I do hope you, you had a wonderful weekend, wonderful Monday. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five punch boards here. Well, I won't punch everything at the moment, just so I can get to the, the expansions and see what's inside. I am doing well. Um, pretty relaxed weekend. I hung out with family, got to see niece and nephew. Um, I did end up getting outside and walking around, but forgot my sunscreen. So, as you can see, I'm a bit red in the forehead today because I had a mask on. So, you get the, the modern day farmer's tan of up top and down low. Different. So this cardboard, like we talked about, not the thickest, um, but they do punch it, cut it, laser cut it, however they did it very well. So the risk of tearing is minimal. It takes very little pressure to have these come out. So here's some of the boats. Did you play anything this weekend? Learn anything new? Play any old favorites? Let's see what one of these boats is like. So this boat has a lot of fold edges. I believe that. Let's see which way that folds up, because if not careful, the print on that could tear. Those are punching very easily. Some of the small skinny slit style punches to open up the boat. Probably have to look at the instructions on how these boats assemble. Most likely like go up. Played Raiders of Scythia with my beloved 11 year old nephew for the first time. He went out of his way to tell me the next day how fun it was. Well, that is wonderful. It, it's always great when A, you can play with family, but, and, and teaching games from the hobby to especially younger minds, and then they come back and really enjoy it. That is one of the greatest things of the hobby, is, sp is spreading the joy and the love that we have for gaming and seeing other people kind of catch on which is kind of my hope here is just spreading the joy and hoping everyone that watches tunes in has a chance to learn something and walks away with a smile okay so i got one of those boats punched and put together i believe this is how it goes together which it did also have instructions, which I should have looked at. <laughs> um, it does look like there's another piece or two, because the instructions talk about the folding. And then there should be a figurehead that can go at the front of it. Yep, right here. So I'll punch that real quick, and we'll see how that looks. Yep, I see the space for it. Yeah. So there's that right there. I'll turn it that way. There's one of the boats. Uh, 
Uh, so there's a type of brightness that you can see in the eye when a BG session went well. For sure, that is one of my favorite things right now when I can share the hobby and you can see someone light up like either when they when they kind of like catch on to understanding a game and like really get it and when they find a new game that has like an IP or a theme that they really enjoy and so it kind of draws them into the table and keeps them there um, I like I said I'm going to punch the rest of those boards later because I want to get to see what's in the expansion boxes. Yeah, so I'll have to finish punching that tonight, tomorrow, whenever I have time. Um, so did you end up picking up this game? Oh, and he wants to play Dominant Species Marine. Oh, nice. I don't think I've played that one. But yeah, any time like someone like they are introducing games to that like comes back to you and it's like hey can we try this or do this that's the feeling of that is hard to compare to much yeah so did you end up picking up merchant's cove um if you did what at what level because i actually just received this in the mail well got arrived what saturday midday saturday night and so i was like okay i i can't wait to open this but i'll do it on stream people can hang out see what it's like but i went all in for this game because final frontiers is one of my favorite publishers with their themes and how well they do everything so yeah there's the three big expansions the small one, Secret Stash, and the Backer Built Rogue Pack. You may try to divert his attention towards Dune Imperium. You, uh, you don't often kickstart your last one was Orleans. Well, that's okay. Not a problem. Like I, I know some people really get into kickstarting. Some people don't. Um, all have different reasons for it. And I don't hold anything against anyone who either don't feel comfortable to do it or can't afford it for whatever reason um i fully understand how expensive it can get um for a while i backed too many too frequently and it took a toll on my wallet for a little bit and i kind of backed off and kind of last year or two it's been okay may maybe one or two a month at most if they're cheaper if they're expensive ones, then I kind of budgeted it out. So yeah, the art on this game looks great. Same artist that did Raiders of the North Sea. I believe that is correct. So the artist is... So it says right here on the boxes, um, art by the the Miko, the Miko, however you say it. I'm probably going to screw it up. Um, but his full name is... Let me see if it's in the rule book. But yeah, I believe it's the one and the same. But I know Final Frontiers games gets the same artist for a lot of their stuff. Yeah, so artwork by uh, Mihal Mihalo Dimitrovesky, the Miko. Yeah, so I believe that's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Javi is definitely tough on the wallet. Um, I, I found that starting to help do reviews is starting to help offset it a little bit by being like oh i can get that game for free or at least try it for free for a few weeks before sending it on so i can try a few more games potentially get a few more games but just i, I like the front the final frontier game so much they the artwork the way they've done their games that i've i've backed the majority of their games um you know what I'm going to unbox the Dragon Ranger next. Yes, I saw a post on Facebook. I think it was last week, someone talking about um, Kickstarter. And they, they reached super back level. And it was kind of like a double-edged sword of like, when you're not when you're not that, you kind of look up to it. You're like, oh, how do you get there? And then you when you get it, you're like, 
Oh my, how many have I back? Why, how did I get here? Um, yes, so this does have a solo mode. It has a solo AI set up that you can actually use in a, if you're playing solo or in a two player game, so you can make it a three player game. And so that was in the main box. It was called the Peddler. And so it has its own little player board that set up. So this game is, it's set up so there's a, a main board that everyone can interact with. But then each player has their own small board that actually they play different mechanics. So one person might be doing dice rolling, one person may be doing like marble, uh, waterfall effect, kind of like potion explosion. One person may be purely cards. So this is one of those asymmetric games that is supposed to be easy entry. And so that you don't have to know everyone else's rules to play. So think root, but a lot easier to get into. But yes, it does have a solo. And like each, each player and the solo basically has a small booklet for the rules for its mechanics. So there's quite a bit of reading for the solo mode. It's not just a straightforward AI that you flip a card to do what the card says, but based on how easy the rest of the game should be, I don't see any issue learning that. But my intent is once I have time to kind of play through, I'm going to try to play solo against the solo with all the different types of mechanics or characters that it offers, and then potentially play the game on stream sometime soon. So this expansion, the Dragon Rancher. So this actually allows the game, which is the base game says one to four players. This expansion now says one to five. So we have 3D punch board assembly instructions right on top. We have a booklet for this character and the type of mechanics it'll have. Um, so it's themed around dragons, of course. And it talks about the components, a, the components in this expansion, but typically these booklets talk about the components that that player will need for that character. And it won't talk about like the full board and then the main rule has the main board rules. So this one, let's see if it says what type of mechanic it is. So I see a bag, it looks like a doing some random draw of tokens and placing them. Hatching dragons. And we got this punch board. Uh, so the main, the primary character board, player board, I turned upside down. Uh, you don't have to punch out. So each player has a board kind of like this, about this size. Uh, so has my gaming group gotten together again? Uh, so over more than a year of no big interaction, it's definitely has its toll on you. So yes. Um, so I, long story short, so I moved to where I am a few months before the pandemic hit. And so I was already looking for new game groups, started going to one, only got to go for a month or two. And then, so I had a friend that started doing streaming. I helped him on stream a lot. We always had a guest or two and I learned one of our guests streamers live like 25 minutes from me. So in the past month or two, we've started having weekly game nights again. So a group of three or four of us. Well, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. So yeah, we, we've started having a weekly game night, which has really helped. So it's not just solo or online gaming, but I also help a lot with a playtesting group. So I've still play a lot of games, but yeah, I definitely agree. The, the in-person social aspect of it is, has been hard on a lot of people. And I, I, I struggled for a little while, but staying online, staying connected to everyone, I've somehow actually gotten more social, <laughs> even though I'm an extreme introvert. I've, gotten more social during the pandemic than I used to be 
just because there's so many things I've got, gotten online making it easier for us to stay stay connected. Uh, so yeah, so each player is going to have a board kind of like this that's going to have their own player spots and then there's a big main board. So this punch board it looks like, so we talked about things to assemble. And we got some wooden screen printed tokens, different colors. I'll show some of those off real quick. So we got red, white, green, blue, and yellow. Kind of the same primary colors we had for the rest of the characters. All these are wooden. I think the only char character that didn't have... Well, there's two characters that didn't have wooden pieces yet. There's one that had dice, one that had the hard marbles. Uh, oh yeah, and each of these characters looks like it's also going to be in the expansions. Has a little... 3D printed miniature that can be painted. Now, personally, I am terrible at painting miniatures because of the tiny fine detail and it's not something I have experience in. So, if I wanted these painted, I'd have to get someone else to do it. But, the detail in it, even not painted, is really cool. So, what about yourself? Um, have you started in-person gaming again? Or is your group gearing up for that? How has vaccination and other such been going for you? So it has a bag of bases for standees. Also has another one of these velvet style bag, uh, pull string bags with a print on it. So some more cardboard oh, that's a single card so the base game had cards like these so you could shuffle them up and deal them to each player if you can't decide what character you want to play deal these to players and that chooses the character for them Let's see some of this dragon art punch these so all these do punch very easily very small tabs so they don't tear Novax yet will when you find the courage is that the courage to necessarily just get out of the house or is it concerns about the vax itself um, I, I know everyone has slightly different reasons for it so I don't want to assume and I of course also don't know exactly where you're from so there's also some vaccines are more easily attainable depending on where you live. Too much time on YouTube is given safety concerns. Understandable. Um, and to the extent I'd rather everyone be safe and comfortable. And if that means delaying getting the vax but still staying safe at home, that is better than just rushing out and doing everything without any information so no judgment on waiting to do that um, I do know a lot of the places have upped the ability to get vaccines and I have gotten my first vaccine Yeah, yeah, of course. They they typically only show want to show the issues and don't want to show the no issues. But I've read enough articles to know that the percentage of where there are issues is so small compared to the no issues. But they're going to hype the the issues, of course. I've had my first shot. Um, the only, I guess, problem I had with it was it was a week I had some major allergy issues already hitting me hard and so like the day after I got the shot I basically had some minor headache issues that I experienced anyway and I just kind of had a lazy day laid in bed and what I've heard is the second shot 
the day after is when you, you're going to be lazy. Minor, if any, kind of fever. And just, leth like, not wanting to eat much. It's Most of what I've heard is pretty easy to deal with. No one that I know of, at least, has gotten hospitalized or had major issues staying out of work long term because of the vaccine itself. I've had a co-worker stay home from having COVID for several weeks. And so to me, the downside of the vaccine of maybe a day of not feeling great, there's more pros to it than the con, for me at least. Now, of course, there's some people out there that have autoimmune issues that getting a vaccine could make it worse for them. So I understand why some people don't get it. Ultimately, it's personal decisions that I don't have control over, so all I can do is stay safe myself. So this next expansion is called The Innkeeper. This one also says it expands it up to five players instead of just four. So this immediately ma makes me think of Cavern Tavern. So, at, um, Final Frontier Games also makes Cavern Tavern. And all this artwork and the realm that they designed this within is kind of based within the same realm as Cavern Tavern. So seeing the way they did the beer mug and the tavern and for the innkeeper immediately makes me think of Cavern Tavern. Especially being the same artist and everything. So again, components talks about how to play this character. Uh, we got assembly instructions for the punch board stuff. It looks like you're actually making like a bench table for the for the inn, which is kind of cool. You have different drinks. Yes, yeah, so you actually have looks like an, the inn slash tavern that you're setting up for your board. Uh, standee bases looks like more pieces to add to the meeples that get drawn for the main board another character card to add to the mix if you can't decide you're doing it randomly let's take a quick look at this miniature so we got kind of a short dwarf character hobbling on one foot currently because he stepped on something or something's on his foot carrying the, the drinks. So what aspect of this game prompted me to pull the trigger? Uh, well, first off, I have backed... So one of my top five games is also from Final Frontier Games. It is Rise to Nobility, which is a dice as work replacement game. And a same publisher same artwork and everything but when i was looking at the kickstarter for this game the way they set it up as asymmetrical character or player abilities but still you have interaction on the main board but it's easier introduction than say root which you don't have to know every character to play the game you can just learn your one character and my experience with Final Frontier games, both from kickstarting their games and just playing their games in general, I've never not enjoyed one of their games. So both the way they set up the rule books so you can learn the game, the artwork, the mechanics, the balance of the games, um, the way they run their kickstarters are very informative, and that even if they do have minor uh, delays, they keep you informed on it and up to date. So I've always been happy with backing this publisher and just the price point that it was at the time for the Kickstarter. I, I knew I was like, okay, I know I'm going to end up buying that game regardless. So I was like, might as well get it now while it's a little bit cheaper and to help the publisher so they can actually print the game. It was kind of that, that double-edged sword of helping them out, even though knowing I'm waiting but I know I'll get the game because I've trusted them enough to release the game. 
And so it, it wasn't necessarily, okay, I have to pull the trigger. Um, it was like I've backed enough Kickstarters to know when I look at a Kickstarter, this game has great art. I can trust the publisher because of all the information they've provided. Do I know if they intend to bring it to retail? As far as I know and believe, yes. Everything they've done before has come to has gone to retail. So they they typically only do like one or two minor things. Like this has a backer built rogue, rogue pack that would be Kickstarter exclusive because they they they're a they're a publisher that has done enough that they're established that they don't typically do a Kickstarter only game. Uh, I don't know all the exact details of when it's when it will come to retail, um, but my perception is it will be retail. Like even some of the other games that I've kickstarted from them ended up on retail in retail, even if they're not as well known in retail or as easy to find, just because they may not always do a high count print run, just because they're not as as popular as some of the other publishers per se uh, so that was the innkeeper just the back of the box so we got one more big box expansion and then the smaller ones the last bigger box expansion, which is just the same width and height, but the thickness of the box is thinner than the base game, is the Oracle. This one also expands up to five players instead of four. Still says 60 to 90 minutes for the gameplay, ages 14 and up. And that age range is more because of all these small pieces. I would say these games would be easier enough, easy enough for slightly younger to learn as well. Looks like a table hog, but once it's down, all eyes will be on. Exactly. Um, so let me pull the main board again. So like, like I showed you, each player is going to have a board almost the size of this box. And then the base game has a six-fold board. Like, that barely fits on screen. It is... So the table I have, which my hand's over here, and then that's almost three feet is what my camera shows by almost two feet up and down. So as you can see, that's a pretty sizable board. Um, but this has scoring track, places for cards, timer track, and a lot of stuff going on in the middle. And then, yeah, it, it's an awesome board in the art itself. And then you add on top, each player has their own board that again plays its own way like it's going to be a lot of being able to play a lot of different games and not experience the same game over and over um so of course the middle you're interacting you're pulling meeples meeples end up going on the boats to different ports and you're trying to have created the correct goods for where people are going based on using your own board and its own mechanics so you have some interaction in the middle affecting how other people can score based on seeing what they're creating and where meeples end up going. There's some corruption going on. And then something really cool about the back of this board, they did a little map showing some of their games kind of interconnected in the same realm. So right here you have Merchant's Cove at the, the big island. Like, and then it talks about Cavern Tavern right here, one of their other games, where it would be located in the realm. Um, this says Caveborn, which I believe is another one of their games. And then kind of like the Halfling Realm, Humans, the Elf, the Trobits. So a lot of the, the fantasy races that they use in these interconnected games, they've really they've done a good job of kind of spanning the different games, both in art and theme.
So yeah, uh, this expansion was the Oracle. So it has like flavor text on these. Of course, I've read some of those before. Talks about components. Uh, and then how you play this specific character. So this... So this expansion right now, or this character, you can say, has the most extensive rules I've seen yet. Most of them are this the single page booklet basically open at once this is a, a double open so a little bit more rules than the other characters talks about horoscope stuff so kind of about the stars and and divining what might happen we got more punch board assembly instructions, so it is really nice how they've done that. Tell you how to assemble everything. Another punch board. Okay, so then this one has two D4, so four sided dice, just standard plastic. Now this is a light blue as opposed to all the colors of the regular six-sided dice of the main game as a dry erase marker so I wonder if the, it almost seems like the finish on this board might be slightly different unless the finish is the same on all those uh, no the rest look matte this does look like it has a sheen to it so they've made this gloss so you can actually use a erase marker on it my base pieces Looks like we got a little bone and like a maple with an X through its heart. The character card itself. Did something get punched already? Nope. Looks like it comes with one additional token that they didn't fit onto the board that they threw in the box. Let's look at this miniature. Well, that is a thicker miniature than the other ones because a bit heavier set of a character. But I do like that they've created miniatures for every character you can play. that expansion which show both sides of that punch board looks like some kind of like the instructions show some of these pop open fold together to either hold different pieces this one looks like it creates a section with the dividing dividing sections inside of it in a stand like a little table or shelf to put things on so definitely interesting to see how that character plays. Yeah, because the, the front of that box shows that it's like a crystal ball. Do I post reviews, videos are written on BGG? Honestly, I need to get better at adding them to BGG. So I do have a YouTube that I post some of my stuff on. Um, and I also post to Instagram, typically, where I do more of a shorthand review where I just kind of post a picture or, or a couple of pictures and then just do a, a paragraph or two about the game and what I like or don't like about it. I have not done a lot of, of long form reviews yet, but with who I co-host with, I he's working on a website and so we'll be doing longer form reviews at some point. But I've started doing some video reviews of stuff over on my YouTube, which... Let me see if I can get it to post the link. I'm trying to remember what my shortcut is. There we go. There we go. 
there's my links to the main stuff I do. So the Instagram, st or not the Instagram, the Twitch stuff, I only started a little over a month ago streaming by myself. And I typically, Monday nights, will play a short game. Well, sometimes short, sometimes it takes longer. But I'll play a game that has a solo mode to either teach how to play it or a game where people can play along with me. Like tonight I was playing uh, number nine and then Friday nights I typically do unboxings but this week on Friday I won't be able to do an unboxing because I'll be out of town. So I kind of did a joint stream where I played and then I'm doing this unboxing. I appreciate the sub on YouTube as well. Yeah, so both both the YouTube and Twitch stuff for by myself, I started all of that this year. The Instagram I've been doing for since, what, 2019, give or take. So a little over two years straight where I do my best to basically post something every single day. So that that's where I, I've been the most active. But then just expanding it to this as a way to kind of talk about stuff more, show what I'm unboxing, everything new. Um, so this is the last box expansion. It says it's the secret stash. Yeah, so that booklet is a little bit more to it. Looks like it has quite a few different things it talks about. Probably because you can pick some of the pieces you're using, not necessarily have to use at all. So it has some more solo scenarios. Oh, that's a thick book of solo scenarios. What is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. At least ten different solo scenarios, with one of them being three different chapters. <laughs> the secret stash speaks to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have the scenarios. It talks about them. They're set up, the phases, and the scoring within it. Yeah, so this this is probably definitely going to be one of the ones that I hit up the most, just as I learn the game and have to play solo, which I'll, I'll probably be able to get my game group to play the game too, but on the weekends or when it's not going on, I'll definitely be pulling this game out. And we got more punch board instructions with more another boat. Maricabo. Um, I don't believe I've played Maricabo, but yeah, it's this didn't read like it was a campaign. It was more just like different scenarios you could choose between, so you don't get bored with only one play style of solo. So we got two more boat punch boards, and then another punch board. We got some more wooden screen printed pieces so all of their the meeples even in the base game were screen printed both sides they're not standard meeple shapes faceless men or people of different types and this is the first I guess expansion that has extra decks of cards so we got a regular size deck. Now these, like I talked about in the base game, do not have a quick open or quick release for the package. So you might have to risk taking a knife to the edge, which is always kind of tricky and scary to do. Because you don't want to mess up any of the cards. I've had a game or two where at least one or two card gets messed up. Uh, I believe they should. I, I'd have to look it up, but based on the insert for the base game and everything in it, and even in the instructions I saw, it looked like the, all those meeples were intended to be part of the game, not as an add-on. They, they do it more where the add-on is either by ex extra expansions or you get like a backer built card deck 
which will be the last deck of cards I open. So the cards I just opened. Here's the back gold ship. And it looks like different boat spaces and numbers on those spaces. It almost looks like you're adding an island space into the middle of that main sea of the main board. And then we also had, I believe these were, these look very similar to the corrupt cards from the base game. Let's see which way the art goes. There we go. These look almost like sea creatures that you have to fight. Yeah, but one thing I really like about all of their games is they, they do really well at almost every card or board or whatever they do in each game is unique art. They don't just like copy paste to dozens of cards the same thing. They come up with a lot of unique thing uh, options to draw. Okay, and we got some a deck of smaller cards. Looks like some of these decks cards will go with the base game. Same types of cards. Show the different backs first. We have those right there. Okay, I think these were the corrupt cards that can actually get you negative points from that match the base game. And we have a new back. So these, depending on what you take and have at the end of the game, can get you negative points. I believe these feel like they're linen finish, which is really nice, especially when you have decks this big, too glossy and they don't stay stacked well. But yeah. From my experience with Final Frontier games, all of their production value is always top notch. I've never had an issue with them. Like, I, I, I can't remember if it's part of just the Kickstarter itself, if they were stretch goals or what, but they, they always do great at high quality components. Like, even though I talked about some of the cardboard that they were using seemed thin, the way they punch it, cut it out, you're not risking tearing. Um, the quality of it is still there, even if it's not super thick cardboard. So these were some of the different character card, well not characters, but different people that you might encounter in town that you're selling to. I think they were, it kind of shows the different goods they're looking for so you can sell to them. These are new cards, so I don't know what they do. It may be certain goals. And even another smaller punch. But as you can see, these take very little pressure to punch out. And even the tabs on them are super small, so they're not intrusive during gameplay. I found some games, either thick cardboard or they just don't cut it well and they leave a giant tab and we're tearing it. The way they've set these up is you're going to get a clean piece. You're not risking tearing it. So I've always been really happy with what I buy from them. That, that's one of the reasons I was more than willing to help with the Kickstarter as opposed to waiting is just because the quality of their games. And I've always enjoyed them and the artwork. It's always been a win-win situation. I'm going to have to see if these components from these expansions will end up fitting into the base box. That might be my only concern. Because otherwise, that's, this will be a lot of shelf space for this whole game. And last but not least, we have the Kickstarter pack. It's the Backer Built Rogue Pack. Do 
Do I plan on twitching a solar run through for this one? Most likely, yes. I do not have an exact day plan for it though. Um, part of what I typically do for my Twitch playthroughs is something that other people can play along with. So I don't know if I would do this as a bonus stream or just kind of plan it in advance, but for one, I would make sure I learn all the rules first because I typically try to at least teach the game as I play. But eventually, yes, I, I, I feel I would want to do a, a playthrough of this on Twitch. And if not, I would at least create a how to play on for my YouTube channel. Because at minimum, I will be taking tonight's stream and putting it on YouTube as I've been doing lately with all my streams. As, not, as I know a lot of my friends can't join me live, but they still enjoy seeing what I'm doing and unboxing and playing. So even if there are longer videos that don't get as many views, it's still giving everyone an opportunity to watch is my preference. So here are the, the backer cards or I guess three of them are extra or kind of draw your own um, for those blanks kind of got like a giant looks almost like they're in a dungeon and they're robots uh, roguelike they're Get the hoods up and ready to stab you. These look almost like like they're genies coming out of lamps. And these look like convicts dressed in stripes, like they're in jail, making a plan to do to escape or something. So yeah, that was the Rogue Pack Kickstarter back. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably, tomorrow after work, I'll probably actually punch everything and assemble it and then see how it all fits into the, fits into the main box because that was a lot to unpack tonight. But I still enjoyed doing it because, of course, like you saw, there's a lot of great artwork, a lot of interesting things to see. and. I hope you enjoyed it as well, and hopefully I can do the solo run through sooner than later, if, if that's something you're interested in seeing and that would help you determine how much you would like the game or not. Of course, like I said, each character or that you can choose from is going to have a different mechanic, so there's some that are dice rolling, a bit more pressure luck. There's some that there's one that uses marbles, kind of like potion explosion, where there's a waterfall effect. There's some that are purely card based, some that are kind of draw from a bag and luck based. So it all depends on which character you choose to play as well. So I'll probably try to learn most of them, see which one, see if there's a learning curve to them. Maybe teach the easy ones first, or, or just see which ones I enjoy the most. Because either way, I'm gonna have fun when I stream it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I don't know when that will be, but I'll definitely try to plan that soon. And if you, if you're following my Instagram, that is where I primarily post what I'm streaming next. Uh, a lot of times I might not choose it till the day before, but I'll typically post it in the stories and try to also do a, a post about it. And so it's, it's just a general reminder of what time I'm streaming, what I'm playing. But yeah, so typically Friday nights I do an unboxing, uh, just not this week, but typically that would be at 6 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. And then Mondays is when I typically play games at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and you're looking forward to see how the Rondell and commodity speculation mechanics play out. For sure, definitely, yeah. yeah some rely more heavily on the Rondells or the commodity speculations. Um, to an extent, they all rely on the commod the speculation of the commodities of which uh not the merchants the the ones that you pull and put on the boats that come that you're trying to sell to but yeah there's definitely 
the way it's going inter to interwind stuff together. Also, I have to figure out how to fit everything onto my table and show it on screen. Because as you saw, the main board fills my table right now. And then I'd have the extra board, which I don't think I could fit on this right here yet. So I'll have to figure out how to show everything too. But yes, for sure I want to attempt to stream this sometime soon. But I do appreciate you joining me tonight. It's been a joy talking to you, discussing this game, and showing it off. I do hope you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful week. I am going to have to get ready for bed. Being on the East Coast, it is getting late for me, and working early in the morning is a blessing and a curse. It means I have a job, I get paid to support the hobby. But it's also, <laughs> I can't always stay up as late to hang out with everyone on the East Coast. But yeah, I, I do enjoy the Twitch uh, streaming this, and I appreciate you being here. And I hope you have a wonderful evening, wonderful week. And I'll probably call it here. Need that cash to feed the Joneses. Exactly, exactly. Um, so thanks again for being here. And... As always, play games and spread joy.